former executive secretary of the National Health Insurance Scheme, NHIS, Professor Usman Yusuf, has lamented worsening insecurity in Nigeria, saying the country risks becoming like Somalia, where the Al Shabaab militant group had waged war on the nation. Yusuf specifically bewailed the activities of bandits in northern Nigeria, where he said residents were now living in fear and uncertainty, why some have literally become orphans with a living father due to daily attacks by bandits coupled with alleged silence from the leaders. The former NHIS boss alleged that the plight of northern residents was compounded by deafening silence from both the state and federal governments, whom he said were, not, were now on the defensive dismissive and oftentimes trivialization of people's sufferings. Yusuf, in an opinion piece titled, Her Heart Are Heavy, with grief and her eyes full of tears, enumerated some recent reports of attacks that show that insecurity in the north was getting worse by the day. He said, When I write about insecurity in the north, I write from the vantage point of whose close friends and relatives have been victims to these Marudan bandits. They roll out into villages in large numbers, three on each motorcycle, high on tramadol and cannabis, carrying nothing more than matches and rusty AK-47s. They spend hours maiming, killing, burning, looting, raping, rustling cattle and kidnapping villagers for ransom. These bandits are now literally the law in some of the rural areas in northwestern Nigeria simply because of the absence of any form of government in these villages. They roam the, Rome, the local markets with impunity carrying AK-47 rifles slung over their shoulders. Listening, listing some of the incidents, Yusu said on Friday 13 to November 2020, BBC Hausa Service reported how farmers in some parts of northern Nigeria now pay bandit tax and and avert fees before they can have access to their farms or avoid being abducted. This is exactly the same tactics used by Al Shabaab in Somalia, which is now a failed state. On Tuesday, 17th November 20, 2020, BBC Hausa Service again aired the story of the kidnapping of the 12 police officers who were on their way for special duty from Borono to Zamfara State. It was distressing to hear the voice of the wife of one of the officers recounting how the bandit called her, called her demanding ransom payments. On Tuesday 16th November 2020, Radio France International Hausa Service also aired an interview with a member of the House of Representatives from the Niger State on the state of constant fear, frustrations, terror, and hopelessness that its constituents are in due to repeat attacks by bandits. Abuja Kaduna Highway, a 200 kilometer stretch of federal highway, has now become the highway to hell because of repeated kidnappings by bandits. This highway is the most important artery in northern Nigeria, connecting nine northern states to the federal capital and southern parts of the country. Those that can afford to are avoiding the highway by traveling by train with, its, with all its limitations. On Saturday, 14th November 2020, armed men invaded the official staff quarters of Nuhu Bamalik Polytechnic, Zahar, Zaria, Kaduna State, where they kidnapped a lecturer and two children. On Sunday, 15th November 2020, armed men kidnapped nine students of Amadou Bello University, Zaria, returning from an excursion on the same Kaduna Abuja Highway. These bandits demanded a ransom of 270 million naira. The students were freed after seven days in captivity. In a village called Kano Kanoma in Zamfara State on Friday 28th, November 2020, armed bandits stormed the village on motorcycles in broad daylight, killing five worshippers and kidnapping the Imam and 40 worshippers during Juma's prayer at the main mosque. Kanoma in a community kidnappers target due to the number of relatively rich 
so sugarcane farmers he said Yusuf noted that some of her tax do not make it to the media he also slammed the Nigeria army and the minister of police affairs for allegedly downplay the daily attacks Yusuf said the government's response to the tragedies have largely been defensive dismissive and oftentimes travelization of people's sufferings how else can one explain the honorable minister of police affairs statement that bandits have been degraded or the military leadership visiting the abuja Kaduna highway to disprove the news that the highway is deserted due to the activities of bandits whereas six weeks ago nigeria's insecurity was predominantly in the three geopolitical zones of the north the aftermath of hashtag hashtag answers protests have stirred the hornet's nest and opened up new theaters of insecurity in all the three geopolitical zones in the south resulting in the whole nation being consumed by this national tragedy he said the former nhis boss predicted that there would be an upsurge of insecurity in southern nigeria due to the recent hashtag answers protests freeing of inmates during attacks on prisons and the cutting away of weapons by hoodlums during attacks on police situations he recommended amongst others that the government should urgently re-strategize the tactics being used to combat insecurity Yusuf said the government should involve all stakeholders including traditional rulers clerics community leaders youth political leaders and security agents in the fight against insecurity he further recommend his other recommendations include forest rangers should be created using the youth in the affected communities who would be trained and supervised by the military to be to be the boots on the ground in a unprotected forest where the bandits use as their hideouts unregistered sim cars should as a matter of urgency be blocked because bandits use them to communicate to for ransom there are numerous of them see in circulation and appropriate sanctions should be meted to mobile operations for non-compliance ndla customs and pharmaceutical regulators should clamp down on illegal importation cease distributions and use of tramadol which is the drug of choice of bandits Boko Haram insurgents armed robbers kidnappers and autists sale of petrol bandits use motorcycles that use petrol so petrol stations should be mandated to stop the sale of products in jerry cans in affected areas or face stiff sanctions cattle market bandits sell cattle the rosu in local market so the sale of cattle should be monitored and certificates of origin provided by local traditional rulers and the police or dss <clears throat> Local intelligence must be cultivated as a vital tool in this fight. Political thuggery and cultism should be banned and made illegal by the federal government. He said, adding that youth unemployment needs to be addressed urgently. Okay. You now see that uh, the conspiracy in the north of what is happening and they try to suppress it. And their people are not giving the opportunity to be able to speak out. And that's why you see that as soon as this kind of a thing, when the southern parts of the country, when they raised the alarm, when they talked about the NSAS uh, protest, when the NSAS protest was ongoing, they denied everything. They, they made sure that nobody should talk because the way they have already made their people not to talk. So that is the same way that they want the southern people also especially the youth they don't want them to talk you see the atrocities going on in that area and that's why they are not part of they are not even bothered within their mind they will say oh do you even know what is even going on in our place just a answers a sas that are, are harassing you you guys are just talking do you know how many people are dying on a daily basis that is their attitude and that is exactly how they want the whole country to look like and it's gonna it's not gonna be like that because we don't have the same culture we are not as fanatical as they are when it comes to religion. Of course, though, some people are really fanatical, but you cannot deceive a southerner into believing into all those uh, nonsense. And there is no way because our cultures are not the same. So that is why you see that from that their end, they never bothered at all. They never cared. They don't see it as anything. 
But now, what is happening in that place now is it's not something that they would think is that they want to uh, remove Buhari from this throne because that is exactly what they are trying to sell or they want the Southerners to, to believe. Any little thing, they say, oh, they want to remove Buhari. But see, thousands of what is happening you know, in their area compared to what is happening in the southern part of the country. If it's so, if those things are really happening, those incidents are happening in the southern part of the country. Oh my goodness, they want to remove worry. They want to remove worry. That is their excuse. See what is happening. They are trying to suppress it, and their people are not saying anything. Whether they have been, whether they are afraid, or maybe that is their own belief, or they just see it as a normal thing. You know, when things begin to, you know, when we are used to something, you know, you don't even bother again. I think that is what is happening there, and I hope our southern people they will not buy into this rubbish into this nonsense people are dying and you want them to be they are dying and suffering you want them to be smiling and be praising the governor no it's not going to happen you see what is happening now this man is not talking but i've not i, I i've never I've, i didn't even see many of them even talking against what is what, what about this answers of a thing they didn't say much they didn't even say anything the next thing they just rented some people and Asking them to say, oh, we want us, we want us, but see what is happening here. This country, so this is country, let us just leave it there. So guys, let's hear your opinion, leave your comments below and let's have your take on this. Thank you.